Do you remember how we came up with Chum and Charlie at all? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, that was, uh, we had seen a, a GIF online, and they were doing like a, Cup of noodle. a photo shoot. And at the very end is this guy, and he's just wearing this cup of noodles, like like the, the cup. We, we looked at that, and we, we were like, we can rip that off. Yeah. And we did, and now we have an anthropomorphic Chinese takeout box that wrestles for us. Yep. Who, um, who promotes his, uh, his actual Chinese restaurant. There's no way for the guy to see out of it, by the way. There's, it's impossible. <laughs> uh, oh, he's, oh, he's eating, he eating is, his family? He is eating his family. Oh, my God! That man has a family, you disgusting piece of shit. Oh, he just ate his family. Unbelievable. He ate his family. Rivers, I might throw up. I might throw up, Rivers. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my God. Oh no! Like early on, um, I was always kind of a fan of the like late '80s, early '90s. Wrestling is their second job characters type stuff. I always thought that was really funny that like like an IRS agent is also a wrestler or like a Repo Man is also a wrestler. Those type of weird things. I remember growing up. I grew up in North Carolina, so we you know we had WCW. You know, was the one to watch. So I grew up during all that and. Uh, I have the same birthday as Hulk Hogan, which is kind of funny in a way, because um, that, that's the I, that's the wrestler I enjoy the most still. You know, unfortunately, despite how he is in real life, I guess I don't know. I sought, uh, sought out, easy for me to say, uh, Brian Kendrick, who had a school at the time, and uh, you know he he trained me to be. The wrestler I am today. He was doing a student show at the time because his thought process was, you know, it's hard to get work if you got nothing to show people in wrestling. You know, they always want to see what you can do before they hire you. But you got to find something that makes you unique. And you know, if you don't just have a personality that's larger than life, you got to think of something that makes you larger than life. So it gave people a chance to sort of like go out there and wrestle without being nervous because you're just playing a goof or something, you know? And uh, then we figured, why not make a show out of it? The name of the promotion is Wrestling Pro Wrestling. Twice the wrestling, twice the fun, because twice the wrestling. Jervis. Oh, 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 oh. Hold me, Santa Claus. You are always on the nice list every single year. I don't even need to check the list with you. Oh. Uh, originally it was, uh, Brian wanted to do a kid show, I think. Baron Munchausen sort of deal. And he got hooked up with um, this guy named Hunter Jackson, who was the original Techno Destructo in the band Guar. My name is Techno Destructo. And even though I was somewhat damaged on re-entry, I'm here to destroy wrestling pro wrestling. He and Brian got together, asked if I'd be willing to help, which I was super down to do. I was a big Guar fan growing up. I asked Ben if he wanted to help too, and we all would go over to Hunter Jackson's place on a Wednesday for at least a year, solid, mm -hmm. and um, do that stuff. I started going more days because I was really into learning how to do it. You know, it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot and, you know, just hanging out, uh, making monster costumes, uh, getting headaches from fucking industrial strength glue, which probably has shortened our lifespans by a little bit. I would explain wrestling pro wrestling as a pro wrestling show that's uh, rated in for mature Muppet show. It is just a bunch of crazy characters. If you're a lifelong wrestling fan, you'll notice a lot of the wrestling in jokes. If you come here, you will walk away uh, entertained. I think that, uh, you know, in, in the grand tradition of, uh, uh, you know, maybe the most successful wrestling promoter of all time, you'll leave with a smile on your face, okay? For sure. And 
hey, that's fun as hell. I don't know, why wouldn't you like this? I'm a comedian, I come from the world of comedy, uh, but I've been a big wrestling fan forever, and this is, this is the show that I would want to see. Even if you're a non-wrestling fan, it's just a carnival of weird creatures and amazingly odd action that even if you weren't a wrestling fan, you'd be like, okay, I get to see the progeny of a Loch Ness Monster fight a female abominable snow monster or Sasquatch or, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Bigfoot, that's the word, Bigfoot. Not to sound pompous, but I think we, we've done a good job of giving a lot of these characters a, a life of some sort. They're more than just... Yeah, we spend a lot of time making weird videos to explain who they are. Hey, this is Tony Jeff the Frying Pan Man from Scramblers Incorporated. It's a magical frying pan. Uh, I won't hit you with it because it's quite dangerous. Like, we have an entire... We, we, we opened a show with uh, Sasquatch drinking tea. That was it. Just sipping tea for about two minutes. The way I look at it is that's what the character wants to do. I definitely enjoy the great Branzino a lot. I'm the great Branzino! <laughs> you know, that, that, that gimmick is just the right kind of stupid. The sassy assassin, the guy that plays him, Eric Kramer, he's really good. He, he's a voice actor by trade and he just cuts really good promos. And he's the guy really that we put, when we need a guy that can talk, we usually go to him. He's, mm. he's very good at it. You know, shitty Superman, I used to think we were destined to do this for a long time. And one of us will forever Sleep in the shadows. My problem with a lot of the characters is that I want to play all of them. Like I, <laughs> I, I make these things and I really want to to wear them and be them. And then you put them on for like five minutes and you realize that this thing sucks. I'm sorry. This thing. <laughs> I've never been in this before <laughs> in my life. Yes, right? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I actually I would say I think Serial Man because. It, it, it's a character we, we have complete control of, for one, uh, which is helpful. But also, when we build stuff, he gets to build variations of him. And Serial Man is a kind of cool character because we get we have, what, like four of them now? Like four different ones? You got regular, regular generic brand Serial Man. You got Tony the Tiger Serial Man. You got Hollywood Serial Man. And then Mecha Serial Man. So there's... It's, yeah, it's, Chocula Serial Man. Oh, right! You got the... You got, yeah, five. Shit! Yeah. Shit, you got a lot of them. Yeah, and I just I love that that we can have. I think uh, I think a lot of our characters have that too. Where we and when we did uh, Creepy Crawlers, Beefy Brawlers three, we actually had our characters, which are costumes, wearing costumes. And I just kind of love that where they're living, breathing characters <laughs> who also dress up. So it's like, all right, yeah, yeah Emo Tep, our Emo Mummy can dress up as a cowboy. Why not? You know, like it's just fun, kind of weird stuff. And and Serial Man's got that. Was it like the old, like the, you know, Batman, for some reason, he's got skis. And as for you, you overstuffed bird, I'm not gonna let you in front of all these five people ruin Christmas! Santa and Robocop! Whoa! It's uh, Officer Robocop! Robot Cop and Santa! St. Nicholas making a run in here! Oh. Rings true to a lot of people that I talk to, the performers that we have on the show and stuff. They, Some of them do wrestle like very serious characters on other shows and things like that. And they, get to, they get to come to wrestling for wrestling and perform and blow off steam like 
Eric Watts is a legitimate big pro wrestling guy, and he comes on our show and swings our belt around like it weighs 200 pounds. It's not. It's made of rubber. It's a piece of shit. It, I made it. I can admit it. It's just, it's just not great. And then he fights a man with a cheese head and, and you know, commits to it. I want to have fun doing the show. I want the people performing on the show to have fun. I want the people watching the show to have fun. I think a lot of people, you know, these days don't enjoy things. Life is hard enough as it is, and I think there's a lot of stuff that you can complain about, not counting cartoons and pretend underpants fighting. So mostly I feel like I just want people to come to the show and and watch it and just enjoy it and be happy that they were there and not, you know, have to be like, well, I don't know, you know, I don't think Tickles Monster is getting a good enough push. You know, he's not. Who cares? Like, I just want people to be ha happy that they, like, look, they saw this and, like, this is weird. I want to show Tickles Monster to people. I want people to know that there's a giant rainbow monster that just goes out and tickles people. He doesn't fight him, he just kind of comes in and tickles, and he was a number one contender. This match is under. Hanukkah rules. You've got yourself a challenge. Referee, the dreidel to determine who starts. Hanukkah rules match must end with a pinfall to the count of eight. It's right there. Eight crazy nights, eight crazy right uh, there. slaps on the canvas. Count of eight, restart the match. I knew this. Okay. I knew this, Rivers. I knew I, that rule. I, I did not. Again, I, I was not raised with a religious background at all.